Hello all Metagrid Pro users, it's Przemek here, the creator of Metagrid Pro, and today I'm super excited to tell you what's new in Metagrid Pro 1.6.9. So first of all, you'll be greeted with this screen. We have redesigned the what's new screen to tell you what's new in each update, uh, what are improvements, new presets and fixes. Also, the screen features the link to the what's new video like this. So let's jump to the most important feature in this release, which is the redesigned settings. Here we are, just look at that. We are so proud of that. And Metagrid Pro now features the settings it deserves. So it's modern, sleek, easy to navigate, and also it features some uh, contextual help. Um, it's a deep application and lots of features are enabled and disabled in the settings. So, and they are not quite obvious at first glance. So we've got the, um, first of all, short explanation. And then when you need more info, you tap the I button Button, and here we are with contextual help. And of course, uh, we've got uh, it grouped in logical sections, including the what's new um, section with all what's new information and the link to this and future what's new videos. We are so happy to introduce our first grid for Blender. It has been designed by our friend, uh, Mick Scusa, an amazing 3D artist and uh, UX designer. And this grid is a very reflection of his workflow uh, with beautiful colors, custom icons, and uh, the carefully designed layout that gives you access to the core Blender functionalities. Now, the next feature comes directly from user requests. As you probably know, Metagrid Pro shows the profile for the application that is currently in focus on your Mac or PC. So I've got Blender and Metagrid Pro shows the Blender profile that I've just created. If I switch to my coding environment, here I am with the profile for Xcode. If I want to see my version control software, here is the controller for Tower. And if I go to Finder on my Mac, Metagrid Pro shows the profile for Finder. Now, what happens when I switch to the application that doesn't have the um, profile created in Metagrid Pro? So I'm going to select the Sublime Text application. Now, Metagrid Pro can't find the dedicated profile and uh, shows the desktop profile, which is the default fallback profile. Now, you can change it. So in settings, go to settings, go to the automation and scripting, and there is profile behavior section when you can change the fallback profile from desktop to any profile that you've got or installed or created on your Metagrid Pro. So let me change it to Blender. All right, so I, now I can see the desktop. Uh, Metagrid Pro hasn't changed the profile yet. So I'm going to switch to Finder. I'm going, to, okay, so I've got the profile for Finder. Then I go to Tower, uh, then there is the profile for Tower. And when I go to Sublime Text with no profiles in Metagrid Pro, now Metagrid Pro, instead of the desktop profile, shows the profile for Blender that I've just specified in the settings. Nice, right? Now we've got the full control of what is displayed when Metagrid Pro doesn't find the dedicated profile. Another thing that is available through the settings is the new sound theme. So let's go to the sound and animations. And then you've got the sound theme selector here. So you had uh, previously standard keyboard theme and sci-fi theme. Now we've added the modular uh, theme, which is inspired by modular synthesizers, right? So let me show you what it sounds like. As you can hear, the sounds are inspiring, but at the same time, uh, not obtrusive and uh, they will blend great in your working environment. So these were the most important features in the Metagrid Pro 1.6.9. We've also added tons of optimizations, bug fixes and improvements under the hood. And uh, I really hope that uh, this release will make your Metagrid Pro experience even more involving and enjoyable. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.